We seem to be going through the beginning of an artificial intelligence revolution. And as technology evolves, so do the amazing gadgets and tools we can introduce to our homes. My name is Victoria and I am the digital editor here at Next Home. And today we are exploring some incredible advancements in smart home technology with Brendan Charters, the development manager at Eurodale Design and Build. Join us for a Q&A with him where we learn all about two new smart home technologies that may revolutionize your home. Smart homes have been very popular in recent years. Why do you think they have gained such popularity? And on like a day-to-day -day basis, how do they make and improve people's lives? Smart home technology, um, you know, really kind of hit hit the scene about 15 years ago. And, um, you know, it, it started with simple things, um, switches and thermostats. And, and even before that, I guess, arguably, uh, even in in the 80s with security systems, um, you know, home security systems are a form of that type of technology. And about 15 years ago, you started to get uh, some controller type uh, elements that are connected to the internet that allowed you to uh, manage thermostats, manage security systems, lighting, um, those types of things. But, uh, you know, they were um, costly uh, to implement they were um, kind of single source so you had to buy all from one company and things that would connect in with one company and and you know that becomes a little bit problematic because this space evolves so quickly even in the last year it has leapfrogged what happened in the last decade and i think we're going to notice that happening um, exponentially as the months roll on in, in 2023 even can you give a brief overview of what matter is and how matter can be used in the home? Yeah, so so matter is um, is a technology that really is trying to take kind of that sole source creation out of the marketplace. So um, you know we all think of uh, iPhone chargers and things we have that are that are single sole source where, you know, if, if you have an Android device, you can't use your, you know, your charger, from just a simple thing like a charger. Well, the same thing happens with, um, you know, in home security, you look at Ring versus Nest. And so if all of a sudden you have this Ring system, but you like this new product that Nest rolled out, like a lot of uh, the Ring doorbells were, were a big advent a, a number of years ago, but then all of a sudden Nest came out with, uh, these great thermostats or these smoke alarms and so those two products don't communicate with each other so you have these elements that are um, stored on your phone controlled on your phone but independent and so there were some companies that were able to aggregate those but what matter does is it really pulls everything together it's not like google home it's not a controller um, it is it's not a home assistant but it's a smart home connectivity uh, standard and basically you, you look at Amazon, Apple, Google, Zigbee, um, which are those connectors. Um, this is all of those firms, Panasonic, coming together and designing this that they all plug into. So there's literally hundreds of products now can be connected within this uh, within this software um, to be able to operate all within one place. So you can kind of plug and play certain um, uh, elements and products from a bunch of different suppliers. So there's there's you know over 500 suppliers that are plugging into this matter connectivity, which is great um, because yeah. it, it avoids you having um, not just uh, desk drawers full of a, a hundred different types of chargers, but right. you end up, happy, you, you clean up your phone and, and your computer with all the various controllers that are required. So it just makes it more efficient. Can you briefly describe Yellow and what makes it unique as a home assistant? Yellow is kind of, matter on steroids and really what this is 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 yellow is truly a, a home assistant so it's taking your google it's taking your amazon alexa and replacing those and it actually has matter built in it has a computer built in it uh doesn't only deal with new technologies the nice thing is it can deal with any technologies that you already have in your home that is already uh, internet connected so if you have uh, a first generation ring doorbell, for example, or if you have existing smoke alarms that are Nest smoke alarms, uh, if you have a, 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 a wiser do uh, lock, sorry, on your front door, if any of those elements are connected to the internet, 
it can pull all of them in and be controlled from yellow. And the other neat thing about it is um, because it's it's uh, connected to literally everything that, that you have going in the house, uh, it can advise you energy usage. Um, it can oh, stream, wow. it can pull, yeah, like it can pull a ton of data on how you're using those uh, internet connected elements. So there's a lot of refrigerators, uh, other appliances, washing machines, dryers, um, ovens that are all connected to the internet. And so you can order your groceries as things get low. Uh, it can it can track how much you're spending. So you can download this data and spreadsheet and analyze this data very easily because it has that built in computer, um, that Pi computer. It can help you to become a more efficient homeowner, right? For some very people, exciting, very a little exciting. intimidating. <laughs> it's, it is very interesting that it can collect so much data about your home and just about your day to day life that you might not even consciously realize is happening and then you have it all laid out in front of you. Um, that will definitely make life more efficient. Why should somebody choose yellow over another home assistant like Google Home or Alexa? Uh, well, the fact that it's open source, uh, I mean, obviously it it, uh, it allows you to really plug and play anything. Um, the nice thing is with yellow, everything is, is stored um, locally. So that has pros and, and potential cons to it. So if if you have, um, think of it as a server at work where your email is stored locally. If you have um, a fire locally, that server then potentially burns with it. If it's stored in the cloud, you, you're, you're less likely to lose it. Uh, the cloud is susceptible to um, hacks very easily, um, as we've seen many large corporations, governments the world over um, have, have had data breaches um, in cloud based um, type scenarios. And so the nice thing is that it's it is uh, it's protected. It's absolutely protected in that it's um, encrypted on both ends and it's stored locally. So you actually have control of it. Yellow versus Google or Amazon and, and lots of uh, chatter about TikTok lately of, of what data they're they're pulling from your phones. It's not uploading that data to the internet. It's not uploading that data to a company. It's stored only locally. So you're you're less likely to have that data vacuumed out and manipulated and all of a sudden be uh, you know uh, inundated with marketing. That's kind of one of the nice things. Every time you walk in the house, you don't want to hear an ad for whoever has uh, paid for your data. Um, no. But there's you know. <laughs> Like anything, there's there's risks associated with it, and and uh, while it is local, and and you don't need to be connected to the internet for it to operate once it's already connected with those devices. So if you lose your internet connection, um, power as well, it's it it doesn't require the same power that you would have where it's. Um, where it's a, a 110 receptacle, this this can run over uh, power over Ethernet. Um, so one, a few of the risks are, uh, which are pretty standard risks with respect to devices and uh, computers and, and servers are, you know, weak passwords. So if if you have really weak passwords, it's obviously susceptible to hack. You want to stay away from the one, two, three exclamation point type uh, passwords. Um, yeah. If the firmware is not up to date, um, you know, there, there's going to be patches and, and updates that are going to come through and you want to make sure those um, those firmwares are up to date. You're only as secure as your own network at the home. Um, so you want to make sure that's well password protected. Um, and similarly, only as secure as, as the device you're using it on. So if you have uh, people on the network with cell phones that aren't secured, um, that's a risk, computers, laptops, that, that type of stuff, because that can provide an entryway um, into the network. Uh, there's always the the fun malware phishing attack type thing. So you you know you want to have your wits about you when you're uh, opening up emails and clicking on links and that type of right. stuff. And then of course physical security. You know if you if your house is unlocked, someone can come in and yank this uh, out of the wall type of thing and and take that information with it. And so having physical security, which yellow helps to manage, um, but if it leaves the site, it's difficult for it to manage it. So that's, um, you know, you want to use strong and unique passwords. You want to keep those devices up to date. Um, make sure your Wi-Fi and your devices are, are all secure and watch the links you click. But that is 2023 um, anywhere. Everything now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you may as well use a device that'll help 
make things more efficient. Uh, For sure. Since and, everything's and online now. Be able to use, actually use your own data versus the companies that you're, whose products you're using, using your data. I hope you enjoyed our Q&A with Brandon and are as excited as we are about the incredible potential of incorporating AI and smart home technology in our homes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also visit our website, nexthome.ca, for more lifestyle stories like this. I hope to see you in our next video. Bye.